Hello, and welcome to chapters 4, 5, and 6 of your online World Regional Geography course. Respectively, these topics cover the Americas, North America, Middle America, and South America. I'd really like to take this opportunity to just kind of uh, explain and go through a little bit more of the main subjects and walkaways and some of the big points of return. So let's begin with the first one, chapter 4, North America. Now, the United States and Canada are two countries with a great deal in common. Their large territories, their history of European colonization, their immigration populations, and their high standards of living. Both the United States and Canada are becoming less European as immigrants arrive from outside Europe. In the case of the United States, the largest group of immigrants is from Latin America. Now, for Canada, the largest group of immigrants is from Asia. The United States and Canada are both countries with small native populations, although Canada, native people have achieved more self-representation than in the United States, especially since the creation of, of the Nunavut. Quebec, the French-speaking heart of Canada, has struggled for years to maintain its cultural uniqueness without risking its economic well-being. Both countries are post-industrial, with service and information-oriented economies. The United States is the world's largest economy and has a history of spreading its culture, ideas, military prowess around the globe. A really big piece there is culture. I think uh, if you ever have the opportunity or you already have, you should take a cultural geography course because culture is so interesting. Sometimes we kind of negate or not understand how broad it is because culture includes not just the type of religion, but um, it can deal with the music, it can deal with the, the spices and flavors of the food, and can uh, architectural design, uh, the way that we speak. There's so many different attributes of culture, and really when we talk about how California and Los Angeles more uh, specifically is the melting pot of culture, that class like that would really help kind of foresee that. Um, another thing that I'll point out, since we're kind of talking about uh, culture in itself, is you should take also a California geography course, because that deals more specifically with California. It's, uh, again, it's architecture, agriculture, um, media, social media, uh, dealing with food. Uh, it's just so broad and really kind of exciting. It's something different than most people think. So those are some interesting pieces. But think about how our culture is now international whether it be the clothing you wear, or the way that you speak, or even the social media uh, influences. Uh, moving forward, North America is made up of various regions with distinct cultural or physical features. Each region uh, has majority and minority populations based on immigration or native heritage. Economic conditions vary from region to region. All right, so moving forward into Chapter 5, Middle America. Well, the Caribbean, Mexico, and Central America make up the realm of Middle America. Two types of development patterns emerge with European colonialism. The Rimland, with its plantation and agriculture, dominated Caribbean and coastal regions, and the mainland, uh, with its haciendas, dominated Mexico with interior regions of Central America. European colonialism decimated the Amerindian population uh, of the Caribbean and conquered the Aztec Empire of the mainland. Colonialism altered the food production, building methods, urbanization, language, and then also the religion of those realms. Uh, moving forward, we can move uh, with the ideas that Mexico has transitioned from a Spanish colony to partner with North American Free Trade Agreement. Uh, trade relations have helped industrialize Mexico's economy and provided employment, especially in maquiladoras uh, that thrive in Mexico. Mexico has many natural resources, but still struggles to provide economic uh, opportunities for its entire population. Wealth and power is controlled by an elite minority uh, with a European heritage. Uh, what's interesting about this, especially speaking with um, the ideas of Mexico, is usually there's some great documentaries on it, but about the Mexican avocado and how after the trade agreement was reached to allow the Mexican avocado to come into California, how the cartels got involved in a lot of these very, very old family plantations. Uh, nonetheless, moving forward, um, looking at earthquakes, volcanoes, hurricanes, they continue to bring devastation and destruction to human activity in middle America. Other environmental issues such as deforestation, uh, soil usage have also become very serious problems. The varied styles of music that have emerged from the region provide a good example of its diversity. Uh, 
Lastly, tourism is an important economic sector that has mixed impacts on local situation. Every part of the Middle America realm has sought to improve their tourism, draw to help bolster their economy. The last chapter, Chapter 6, deals specifically with South America. So the equator runs through the center of South America at its widest point and parallels the Amazon River. The two main physical features are the mighty Amazon River and the extensive Andes Mountains. Uh, the Andes, the longest mountain chain in the world, runs from Venezuela to southern Chile. The Amazon River has the largest flow of water of any river on Earth, and the Amazon Basin is home to the world's largest tropical rainforest. Rainforests cover less than 5% of the Earth's surface, and yet have the highest and richest biodiversity of any biome. Uh, that being said, it's about 50% of the world's organisms live alone within the rainforest. Uh, Venezuela and Colombia dominate the countries of northern uh, South America. Uh, Venezuela is an urban country and much of its wealth is generated from the export of oil. Colombia is, a mount is mountainous with vast tropical forests bordering the Amazon. Unfortunately, illegal drugs, oil, and coffee are Colombia's three main export products. The United States is a main buyer of these products. Moving forward, uh, Brazil, what's all, well, I should back up, uh, what's interesting is in, in older history, uh, we used to call it the ABCs working our way across uh, Argentina, Brazil, and then Chile. Uh, the ABC of then South America was a really big piece of World War II because those countries had neither picked a side. Uh, if, sorry, as, a, as I digress, if you're really interested in the documentaries, there's a great documentary called Walt and El Grupo. It's a Disney film talking about how during World War II uh, itself, how Walt and some of his uh, future animators, men and women, were sent down to South America to try to create an, you know, an allegiance, uh, to try to get them to join our side versus the other side. Uh, very interesting documentary because they go through the original imagery then and today and are able to superimpose it so you can see them together and to see how many years have passed, but yet some of the architecture, buildings, and culture uh, still is reminiscent of that time. Uh, sorry, um, moving forward, uh, the South America's uh, Andean West region was once home to the ancient Inca Empire, which was conquered by Spanish conquistador Francisco uh, Pizarro in 1533. Ecuador, Peru, and Bolivia have regions with high elevations in the Andes. Uh, moving forward, we can look at the topic that the rural periphery of uh, the rural periphery of Brazil includes the large Amazon basin uh, with tropical rainforests and large undeveloped regions. Originally inhabited by uh, Amerindian groups, uh, the Amazon basin is being developed for agriculture, mining, and the timber industry. There's been an incredible amount of change within the last 15 years in most of these regions. Uh, and lastly, the southern regions of South America have heavily European populations. There are few Amerindians or people of African heritage. Most people live in the urban areas, and about one-third of Argentinians live in Buenos Aires. Chile has been uh, a major uh, trading partner with North America Free Trade Agreement, NAFTA, nations, and has a stable and growing economy. Argentina is a large country in a physical area and has great potential for economic development. I hope you enjoy working through this. Again, don't forget to look at the supplementary videos that I provided on Canvas. Don't forget to complete your reading quizzes, discussion boards, and we'll talk soon.